Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. We are here on the Big Island in Hawaii for a media drive event of this vehicle right here. This is it. This is the all new first time ever 2024 Toyota Grand Highlander. This particular one is the top trim known as the Platinum trim. But before we get into this enlarged mid-sized three row SUV, let's talk about what's going on here. Toyota. They're on a rampage going through their lineup, bringing some redesigns, some long awaited redesigns like on the bigger brother to this, the Sequoia, but also changing up engine platforms like on the smaller brother known as the Toyota Highlander. Now this gray and Highlander is still a midsize SUV. It's smaller than the Sequoia, but obviously larger than the Highlander. Now in this midsize three row SUV, uh, category, there's some tough competition, especially with some redesigns like Honda and the Pilot and the all new Mazda CX-90. But what I want to find out is, was it the smart decision, the right decision to build this Grand Highlander? And is it the better midsize SUV over the Mazda and over the Honda? Let's go ahead. Let's dive into our Platinum trim and find out. Right off the bat, if you're looking at it, you're probably saying, well, Joe, is it just a Highlander that's been extended? No, this is actually its own unique body. The only thing that it shares with the Highlander is the suspension. Everything else is unique to the Grand Highlander. Now, as we come in and we focus on the frontal area of this vehicle, you're gonna notice the new color called Storm Cloud. Absolutely looks stunning in the Hawaiian sun. I love the way they shape the headlight housings, very similar to what you find on other Toyota products, but what's great about it, all LED lighting, turn signals, daytime running lamps, headlights, and if you look down below, not only do we have LED fog lamps, but we do have a functional corner air curtain. I like the way they brought the edge far out to that fender area to really give it an aggressive look without going too over the top. And what's unique about the Grand Highlander is that there's three trims and they're all luxury trims, XLE, Limited, and Platinum. Now you'll notice on the Platinum, you get a little bit of shiny chrome, just a little sprinkling, starts underneath the headlight housing, and then it's gonna coast all the way to the driver's side. On this lower portion, the one area I got a zonk, and I don't know why they did this, is this fake vent area. Not really digging it whatsoever. Should have just left it smooth, to be honest with you. But I do like the way they have this satin metallic silver just to kind of spruce up that lower lip area. Now, as we come across the front grill, like I was saying, you have three different trims. This is the Platinum trim, and the Platinum gets its own unique grill. It's kind of hard to see, but it is a gunmetal metallic gray. You do have a forward-facing camera and, of course, full functionality from one side to the other and really kind of falls perfectly in alignment with the RAV4 Sequoia and the Highlander. Even when you look at the smaller like Corolla Cross, you can see that family resemblance. Now, as we get on up off our butts and rise up to the hood, I like the way they just kept it simple. You just have that rise in the center and everything kind of coasts towards the windshield and evaporates. Now, if you're comparing this to the CX-90, I would have to say that the CX-90 has the sexier, sleeker, more luxurious shape. This though, I'm kind of liking it even more so than the Honda Pilot. Let me know how you feel so far about the frontal area, but you can see the extra width. It's not just about length, it's about the width of this new Grand Highlander. Now, as we come all the way around the bend, you are gonna have two different wheel sizes, but there's many different options within those two wheel sizes that you get to choose from. On the Platinum trim, we have the 20 inch wheel, machine aluminum, V-spoke design with some gloss black, looking good. The other size, of course, is gonna be an 18 inch wheel. So you have 18 inch, which would be on your XLE and your limited, and then obviously you step up to Platinum, you're gonna get these 20 inch wheels, one thing that I want to point out about what's going on here is the tire size. So you have 255 on the width, 55 series sidewall. You're going to have three different engine options to choose from, and you can get this front wheel drive 
or all wheel drive. And we'll talk more about that when we pop the hood. I think my biggest zonk, and let me know how you feel about it, is the flat black around the fender opening. For a luxury SUV, especially one that comes in at a higher price point than the Highlander, I would like to see that body color match like you would find on the CX-90. Honda Pilot doesn't come body match, color matched either, but I wish on this one, especially with Storm Cloud, absolutely superb, would be great to have that all, that Storm Cloud cover. Now, as we rise up, you have your body line. Look at this, it comes off the fender into the front door. We have color matched Storm Cloud on the mirror caps, turn singles, and we do have our 360 degree cameras. From the side, you could see the longer wheelbase. And when I say wheelbase, we're talking about the space from the rear wheels to the front wheels on the side of the vehicle. You got a little bit of bright, shiny metal work just along the bottom of the door, of the window frames for the doors, color matched door handles. And then you have a little bit more of that flat black along the bottom. Up top, you are gonna have those bright silver roof rails. You could get your crossbars. And what's great is, is that they put a ton of glass. Nice large side windows, rear portion of the rear doors, and a nice large rear quarter window. And I like the way that they just brought the trim to a point. Nice little point, doesn't need to wrap around all over the place. Coming around the rear, this is where you're gonna see that familiar Toyota design. So you're gonna have your short stubby roof spoiler, large third brake light, we do have an exposed wiper. I am gonna zonk that. I would like to th them to extend this, take the wiper and tuck it underneath. But I think one of the things that really cleans up the back of the vehicle is look at how they did the Grand Highlander name. It's actually part of the rear hatch area and it's nice color match. Toyota badge, a little bit of gloss black, but you got all of that great lighting for your braking. Platinum badge, because this is the top trim. We do have the Hybrid Max, so like I said, Three different engine options. The top engine choice is that hybrid max. And then as we go all the way down, you do have functional exhaust, stainless steel tips, one on each side, which is a nice pleasant tree to see because a lot of brands are putting fake exhaust, a little bit of the silver like we had on the lower lip and everything else is flat black. But why don't we go ahead, let's pop the hood and see what is all about this hybrid max power plant in our Grand Highlander. All right, guys, we got the hood popped open. We do have a prop rod, which I am gonna zonk because on a luxury trim Toyota, we should see hood struts. Underneath the hood may surprise you, may not surprise you. There is no V6 option on this vehicle. So if you're comparing it to the Mazda or the Honda, I think that's where this is may come up short for you. But let's talk about what we have going on. You can go three different engine options. All of them are a 2.4 liter turbocharged engine. Now you could go regular ICE, internal combustion engine. You could go hybrid, or you could go like what ours has, a hybrid max. So what do we got? 362 horsepower, 400 pound-feet of torque. It is programmed to run on 87 octane, which is important to bring up because not all models are doing that to where you get maximum MPGs and power on 87 octane. It uses a six speed direct shift automatic transmission. It has full time electric all wheel drive, zero to 60 in about 6.3 seconds. The vehicle weighs 4,920 pounds. MPGs, 26 in the city, 27 on the highway, and 27 combined. So very interesting how Toyota is giving you a little bit more variety on not only trim choices, the three different trims, but also engine choices, front wheel drive and all wheel drive, which you don't get that versatility and variety from the other two. But while we go ahead, let's fire this up and see it in motion. All right, guys, we are inside this storm cloud of a color Grand Highlander platinum trim. I know you're saying to yourself, well, Joe, 
I've been waiting for this one. Since you reviewed it many months ago, I wanna see more, I wanna see it in action, but I guess what I also wanna see is the price. Very good point because you gotta put your money where your mouth is, right? So starting price for a Grand Highlander, and what I mean by starting, we're talking about XLE. That's where it starts. There's nothing lower than XLE trim because this is more of a luxury mid-size three-row SUV. You're looking at $43,000. This particular one that we're in, being the Platinum, having all the goodies, the whole nine yards, MSRP of $59,000. Let's see how it compares to the CX-90 and the Pilot to the door panels. Love the design that they did. Super clean, soft touch material. I'm even digging what they did with that satin black. It's not what you think, like a regular gloss black. It's got this triangular diamond pattern on it. And then as you follow your way down, that armrest is super charm and soft. You got contrast stitching. And then the door pocket is a little on the tight side. So maybe two Hawaiian hot dogs, which of course are hot dogs that are spam. They're spam dogs with pineapple slaw and a nice bottle of kombucha to wash it down. Now going from the door panel to the dash, you'll notice that same great stitch work all the way through. USB-C, more of that triangular diamond pattern. What's nice about it is look, look mom, no fingerprints. You could fit about, I would say, a full box of Twinkies. That's 10 Twinkies, pineapple filled, even the bronze trim. That's another nice touch on the Grand Highlander. We got the 11 speaker JBL sound system. And then as you slide on in, what are we working with? We have this horizontal setup to the infotainment system, all integrated. It does go a little past the top of the dash, but it's still clear out of view, 12.3 inch. It's got, of course, the updated Toyota multimedia system. You hit the little car, you can see your power flow, you can get all of your driver profiles set up in this very, very easily. Today we're just Toyota driver, but you can set up all the drivers in your household. Watch this. I hit this little camera button right here, and that's going to give us a nice spin around view. And you could actually change it out to see who's lurking around you out here on the big island. Very cool to have that technology. And then it's all touchscreen. So if you're comparing this to the Mazda, no touchscreen in the Mazda. The Pilot does have a touchscreen, but it's smaller. And if you're the type of person that's always comp compensating for your size, you're going to want the 12.3 inch over the nine inch. Now you do have three stages of heated seats, three stages of ventilated seats. So thank you, Toyota, for putting that in there. Another thing that I like is that you got your dual climate, but watch this. When you adjust your settings, it actually shows up on the infotainment system screen plus the very clear digital LED display. And I like the way the knobs have a nice feel to the rotation, more of that bronze trim, more of the stitching, two USB-Cs. There's a total of seven, and I'm gonna say that a lot in this video. Seven USB-Cs, there's our power on button. This is all just a simple flat black. I'm fine with it because look, no fingerprints. You got two cup holders and a coconut holder. So you could get your coconut holder with one of your like uh, curly straws and you could suck on your fresh coconut juice right here. Down below, you do have a little bit of a nook. This is where you're gonna keep uh, you know, an apple, maybe some Nature Valley granola bars. My advice though, is you have the Nature Valley granola bars, make sure you have like a big piece of paper towel because they're gonna make a mess all over this beautiful interior. This guy right here with the copper finish, that's going to control your six-speed direct shift automatic transmission. Just a little bit of gloss black, more of that copper. And then look at what we have here. You have your mode selector knob, all the different modes. I'll show you this on the business side. We even have a snow mode, hill descent control, nice soft material. And then let me know how you feel about this. This center console actually does not open like a regular lid. You have to slide this and then you can reach down in there. What do we have? We have the new Grand Highlander key fob. Real nice, simple to figure out, just like the other ones. And you could basically fit, I would say, about eight more of those coconuts in here. Or what I'm going to try to get before I leave here is a nice, large conch shell. So that when I start a Rady's Ride video, I could blow into it. Ah. 
just make sure if you get a conch shell that there's no snail in it. It's gonna get smelly in your Grand Highlander if you have that in here when the snail passes away. Seats, wonderful soft material, the stitching. I love the copper accents, nice bolstering, full electric assist. And they did a great job with the microfiber suede material and the soft text material, really gives it a nice combo deal. And then of course, if we're in Hawaii, we're surfing USA because we got a massive panoramic sunroof in here. I'm gonna close this because the sun is blasting hot today on the big island and we have a digital rear view mirror. Now, there's a person that set up this campsite. They're actually looking for the Hawaiian Bigfoot. That's what that blue area is on our digital rear view mirror. Maybe we'll be able to capture him on film. You never know. But why don't you get over here? I wanna show you behind the wheel of the new Grand Highlander. I got business time in that gr this Grand Highlander. You do have two memory seat settings, which are great. A nice, simple aluminum silk plate Grand Highlander. You do have a 10-way adjustable seat for the driver, eight-way adjustable seat for the passenger. So they really took care of the two people up front. I'm swimming in space in here. You could really feel the extra room and soak it in, just like I'm gonna be soaking in the rays as we go surfing. As soon as we're done filming this, steering wheel, the leather all the way around, nice copper accent. The one thing I'm gonna have to zonk and it really hurts my eyes is this horn button. What did they do? I would like to see some stitching. I would love to see a little bit different design. It's just like a rubber bumper looking thing off of a bumper car. But you got a little bit of gloss black, nothing too crazy. Paddles to go up and down that six speed direct shift automatic transmission, heated steering wheel. And then you'll notice this little panel right here. This is actually a new facial recognition system to where when you get into the vehicle, it knows who's driving it. So then all your settings automatically happen very quickly. Check out that digital display there, 12.3 inches in size. And then of course you have your different modes, rock and dirt, mud and sand. You do have this annoying bit of warning signal that comes up, but I like the sport, of course, the eco mode, clear graphics, super crisp, and you could actually change up the information that's displayed in the power gauge and also in the speedometer gauge. And you got a head up display. But why don't we get into the mid row and see if your passengers are gonna be living large in this grand Highlander. All right guys, back seat time in this three row midsize SUV. Of course, we're gonna start in the middle cause that just makes sense to me. What's nice is you're gonna get the same exact looking seat material as the front seat passengers. That's a nice touch. You do have these captain's chair armrests. And you know what? <sighs> I'm just gonna give it half a zonk. They just need to be a little bit larger, just a little bit larger. The seats do slide and they do recline and you do have that soft text material all the way around, super sized pockets. You could easily put, I would say, four flounders back here. Take them back, fillet them, grill them up right on the beach. Speaking about grilling things up, you don't have to worry about getting, feel like you're on a grill back here because we have ventilated seats. Thank you, Toyota. Three stages ventilated, three stages heated, which is real nice. You got your AC controls with the same LED display, USB-Cs on both sides and a home power source. Remember, how many USB-Cs are there? You are correct, seven of them. I have my own pocket here. That's where I'm gonna keep my flounders. And then just sitting back here, I don't know, man. Feels pretty good. You got your AC vents mounted nice and high. Even with the panoramic sunroof, you still got plenty of room. And like I said, seats, they slide and they recline. Pretty good, pretty good distance. And you have this really cool party tray here. Two cup holders. You could put some Slim Jims, some Twizzlers, and of course, some gobstoppers for those long family drives. But while we go ahead, they say there's more room back there. We're gonna find out in this Grand Highlander. Right, guys, back seat time, the third row. Is it meant for peasants or could you put the prince back here? I'm back here. I don't know if I'm a prince, but definitely feels larger in size. I mean, it's a Grand Highlander. It's gonna feel more spacious. Is it perfect? Maybe not so much, but let me show you some of the things that you have. First of all, you got an amazing landing pad for your feet and your kids' feet. You know, they're dirty. They're not gonna rip up the uh, carpet. They're gonna not fall, which is important too. 
You have the all-weather floor mats, not only going to save the carpet from all the dirt and mud, but it's also going to give you five extra horsepower. The one thing that bothers me, and one of the zonks back here, is I don't like the way that the third row gets different seat material than everybody else. That makes me feel a little bit like a peasant. Another thing is I would like a sunshade. Mid-row gets a sunshade, manual sun sunshade. A lot of brands are doing the sunshades back here. I would like to see that, but you do have USB-C, and it's really cool how they mounted it. This is also the grab handle to pull yourself in. Two cup holders. You could actually put a tablet in here on each side. Plus, what you could do is with your tablet, you could research and find out that there's 15 different types of flounder out there that you could catch here in Hawaii. And then you could bring them back, like I said, you fillet them up. But uh, let me know how you feel about the actual seat material. When it comes to space, the only way to get better is you gotta go full size. My knees, a little bit lower, a little bit than a Highlander, but still very high. The good news is my head is not touching the roof line, but what you can do, and it's all manual, is tilt the seat back. By doing that, it makes it much more palatable, palatable palatable, I can't speak right now, I'm getting tongue-tied, palatable sitting back here with the seat all the way back. But if you have seven pieces of luggage, I don't know how that's gonna work. But why don't we go ahead, let's sit, get in that cargo area because you can fit seven pieces of luggage with this third row up. Let's see how we're gonna do it. Let's get to the cargo area. All right guys, time to get into the cargo area. I think this is really gonna be the proof is in the eating of the pudding when it comes to what they did with this Grand Highlander and why they did it. Here we go, hit the button, nice electric assist, raises up. You're gonna be greeted to, I left the third row up, you're gonna be greeted to over 21 cubic feet of space with the rear seats up. So you could fit seven pieces of luggage with the third row up, something to think about. I do like the way you have your JBL sound system, that subwoofer. You do have a home power source at the back. And then underneath the cargo floor, you got a little bit of a tray. Nothing too crazy, just an area where you could put some Twinkies. You put probably about 24 travel Twinkies. To get the third row down, it's actually very simple. No buttons, nothing like that. You're just gonna lift up, and then you're just gonna fold. Lift up, and then you're just gonna fold. And what I did was I already folded down the mid row to show you the maximize cargo strength of this vehicle. So we went from about 21 cubic feet of space to almost 58 cubic feet of space with the third row down. Mid row down, we're looking at 97.5 cubic feet of space. Compare that to the CX-90 and the Pilot, and it shows you why Toyota decided to bring this Grand Highlander to market. In the back seat area, you can see that we have those USB-Cs I was telling you about. Remember, seven. Lucky number seven USB-Cs throughout the whole interior and 13 cup holders. I count them all. You could put Yeti cans in there. You could put all sorts of Bigfoot cans and Super Slurpees, but you know what? I heard there's one heck of a place to get some fresh coconut and pineapple and maybe one of those Hawaiian hot dogs right up the road. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's get to it and go on throttle in the new Grand Highland. All right, guys, we are behind the wheel of the 2024 all-new Toyota Grand Highlander. It's been a while since they've introduced an all-new SUV to their lineup. And remember, this is Toyota's largest mid-size three-row SUV. Now, I have it in sport mode. The way that you could tell that is on the dash, you get a little bit of red trim. I like the way that you could have the navigation right smack dab in the center of the digital gauge cluster. I have my head up display very clear, just enough information. And that's one thing that I feel like Toyota always knocks out of the park is the layout of where everything is. It's very intuitive. It's a little bit of touchscreen, a little bit of physical knobs and buttons and everything else that makes sense. Going down the road, they did a great job with the TNJA platform and having that similar suspension set up as the Highlander but with that little bit larger size. Of course visibility when things fall off of trucks in front of you you could get out of the way 
but visibility out the front is wonderful. You got your digital rear view mirror out the back, and we have the updated, upgraded Toyota Sensing 3.0 safety feature system. On top of that, with it being the platinum trim, this does also have traffic assist. So when you're in a traffic jam, it's a semi-autonomous way of driving with that system makes it a little less stressful when you are sitting in a slow moving traffic situation. But seats, I love what they've done with the seats overall, especially with the amount of real estate, both on the bottom portion and the back of the seat. And then I don't think your passengers are gonna complain about that extra room. And I really feel like, especially when we're talking about CX-90, this does clearly have more room than the CX-90. Honda Pilot, especially the Elite top luxury trim, it's gonna be close, but uh, I think there's some s special things that the Grand Highlander brings, especially with the way that third row can tilt so far back in recline mode, which is nice. But one thing you're gonna notice right off the bat is that it's very quiet in the cabin of this Platinum trim. The reason why is we have that noise cancellation technology, plus you're gonna get more said sound ending material, more adhesive, structural adhesive, and acoustic glass. That's gonna give you a more serene driving experience. But definitely when it comes to all the controls, things feel really good, of course, what do we need to do? We're in sport mode. We need to go on throttle. If you're ready, I'm ready. On throttle, there we go. Getting the power to the ground. You got that six speed direct shift automatic. Now remember, if you go Honda Pilot, you're getting a, tense, uh, a nine speed. And then if you go with the Mazda CX-90, you're getting an eight speed automatic. So couple gears short compared to the CX-90, but I really think that the way they have it geared overall really keeps you nicely in that power band, but also allows you to take advantage of better fuel economy. But on this road here, really soaks up the bumps nicely. One thing that I do like with this, the Honda Pilot is you are getting that great feedback through the wheel, which feedback is pretty decent with the Grand Highlander, it's just, I feel like it's a little bit better on the Pilot and especially with the CX-90. But I think what you're giving up in driving feedback, you're gaining in space in this vehicle. Like I said, I showed you earlier, you could have that power flow display, the power getting to the all-wheel drive system, and of course, that battery pack, that liquid cool battery pack and our electric motor. Nice that it displays very cleanly on the infotainment if you want to have that system up. To go into manual shift mode, you just pull back on the shifter and then now it tells you what gear that you're in. It's a little on the small side, but it also does show up in the head up display. I'm gonna let this traffic kind of pull out in front of me a little bit so we have a little bit of room to go on throttle and to enjoy these Hawaiian style twisty bits. Nobody's behind us. How do I know? Look in that digital rear view mirror. If you're ready, I'm ready. On throttle, here we go. Definitely feel the pep from that turbocharged engine and the electric motor. Compared to the CX-90, there is a little bit more body roll in the corners, but still very planted. All right, guys, here we go. Once again, we're gonna do on throttle from a rolling star first gear. On throttle, here we go. I tell you, the shifts really live up to their name of the transmission, that direct shift transmission. It really feels super direct when you go through each gear. Very, very smooth, especially once you get up in that torque curve. And they do a pretty decent job to make it not sound like a four-cylinder engine when you're inside behind the wheel. 
but I actually feel like it's a more invigorating power plant than the naturally aspirated V6 in the Pilot. The, the Pilot, it seems a little bit more subdued, a little bit more subdued. It, it almost feels a little lazy, the way it, it accelerates and revs through the range, whereas this just feels a little bit more punchy. So it's really a compromise depending on which way you want to go with your midsize three-row SUV, but definitely bringing some unique touches with this Grand, Grand Highlander. All right, guys, it's been one heck of a mahalo kind of day out here in Hawaii with the Grand Highlander. Definitely got to thank Mustafa and the rest of the team from Toyota for inviting us to this media drive event so that we could bring the vehicle directly to you. Let me know what you think is the Grand, Hi Grand Highlander, especially this platinum trim, checking off all the boxes for that ultimate mid-size three-row SUV, or are you gonna go CX-90 with the Mazda or the Pilot from Honda? Let me know down in that comment section. I know Mustafa wants to know and the rest of the Toyota crew, but if you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radies Rides family. Of course, we need to give it to the person that is always hanging 10, whether it's on a surfboard, skateboard, wakeboard, or with that camera. Lori, working it like a champ. Show her some love in the comment section. Thank you, Lori, for all that you're doing. Just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.